Welcome again, my people, to another episode of the Coach's Desk with host Coach Minzi. And on Coach's Desk is where you get your sporting experience. And in this episode, people, we'll be talking about Caden Jackson, another English-born professional footballer who is actually looking about his Jamaican passport. It's quite interesting because you'd have had Kido, you'd have had DJ Van Anderson, you would have had uh, Blair Turgot, and more would have looked about their passports independently. It is interesting, my people. Why so many of these foreign players? Are, are eagerly interested to get their Jamaican passport. <laughs> yes, my people, it is indeed mind-boggling. So many of these players are trying to get into the Jamaican team. Is it that they want to turn Jamaica into a powerhouse in CONCACAF? Is it that they are the English rejects, as some persons would say? Or is it that because World Cup is coming up and it is every player's dream to play in a World Cup? I don't know what the situation is. But there are a lot of quality players, people, who are getting their Jamaican passport. Like I said earlier, many of these players are getting their passports independently. They are not going through the process like other players would do via the JFF. That's the Jamaica Football Federation. So, people... Let me tell you about this player. One Caden Pastel Don Jackson. He was born in the 90s, 1994 to be exact. So this player is age 27. Is it a situation where he was rejected by England? <laughs> is it a situation he wants to play in the World Cup. Let me hasten to tell you people. In 2016. Caden would have played for the England C team. Only one game. However, he would have scored in that game. He plays the position of a striker. Is it getting more difficult for him to get in? Or breakthrough in that England team? Hmm. Pretty interesting people. Let's 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 talk about him a little bit further. He currently plays for the Ipswich Town Football Club. And he wears the number nine jersey. So that tells me. That he's the number nine player. Now, looking at his youth career, people, he would have started out at Gosley and Bradford City. Yes, that's where he would have started out his youth career. His professional career took him to a place called Swindletown. Having previously played for non-league football uh, club Albion Sports. Now, Caden, during his tenure at the Sundertown, he went out on loan. Yes. And that loan would have brought him to Swindon Supermarine, where he would have played 10 games and scoring 6 goals. Fast forward to 2014. He went on another loan spell to Oxford City, 
23 appearances, 8 goals. Then he was sold in 2014-2015 to Tamworth. Played a lot of games, 36 games, 8 goals. You can actually work out the goal per game ratio to see what sort of striker he is. 2015-2016 he was transferred again to Wrexham Football Club. 36 games, 4 goals. 2016-2017, Barnsley. Yes, but he did not play for them. He was sent out on loan again to Grimsby Town, where he played 20 games, 1 goal. Is that good for a striker? <laughs> Interesting. 2017-2018, he was sold to... Accrington Stanley, 45 games, 16 goals. Then he is now at Ipswich Town, people. That's where he's, he's at now in his career. 83 games, 15 goals. People, from all these statistics that I would have put forward in terms of his games per goal ratio, Do we believe that this player, Caden Jackson, is worthy of a reggae boys call-up? What are your thoughts, people? Can we safely say then that this player is a England reject? He would have only played for the C team. He did not play youth football for England. You have the U15, U16, U17, U18, U20. There's no record of him playing for the England's youth team. So is he really a reject? Hmm. Let us ask ourselves these questions, people. Do we have better players that play for the national team? That plays his position? Interesting. Do we need this player? If we get this player, are we going to stifle another local base player? Interesting. Interesting, people. Some, 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 some tough questions that I'm asking. Some tough questions. Whose game will he take? Is he, be, is he being scouted by our scouts over there in England? Does he have the quality to play for the reggae boys? Some will argue though that even though these players are now dubbed England's rejects or English rejects, they are way better than the reggae boys that we have who play locally. Because those leagues would have been higher than them. But these are the same persons who would have been calling for players who possibly play in Scandinavia, uh, Europe. And those leagues that they are playing in Europe, they would have called them Bush League. So it's not really adding up when you look at it on the point of those who are calling these players calling for these players <laughs> people there are many more players who are actually looking about their jamaican passport yes jamaicans are connected to every single country in this world everyone if you check it, we could be on every single continent in this world. And if I, 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 I choose to take it a little further, Jamaicans possible could be up there on Mars. <laughs> Interesting. Impossible. But I will not put it 
far from a Jamaican. So, people, this player, Caden Jackson, he would have won EFL uh, League 2 uh, with the 2017-2018 uh, Accrington Stanley team. That's as far as it goes. I'm going to give you some things to do, people, my fans out there. I want you to go on YouTube, type in these, this player, Caden Jackson, and I want you to watch some clips of him, if there be any, and I want you to come and comment in the comment section, telling us what are your thoughts on this player. There has to be a huge investigation in this matter. Jamaica has now been attracting players. Don't get me wrong. It's not a bad thing. Because Barbados, they are getting overseas players. Curacao, they are getting overseas players. Suriname, they are getting overseas players. United States are getting players from Europe as well. Last but not least, people, Cuba, yes, Cuba, they are getting players too. The, this, is, this is the first in history that this is happening for Cuba. They are getting overseas players to assist their program. So do we want to use our local players when all these other countries and islands are strengthening because of their links, whether in England or in Netherlands or, or, or Spain? Do we want to be left behind? Let us think about it. Let us wrap our minds ar around it. What do we do? How many do we take? Well, it's not up to us. It's up to the federation. It's up to the technical committee. It's up to the coach. Or coaches. So this is going to be an interesting World Cup qualifying campaign. As well as the Gold Cup. Who are these players? Where will they be coming from? Are our f the, the, the favorites that we would have had and have been talking about for weeks? Are they really going to come? Or are these persons who, are, who have been independently looking about their passport, they are the ones that will come? Hmm. We're yet to see that. It's going to be interesting times ahead. Watch this space, people. Thank you again for tuning in to the Coach's Desk. Big up yourselves. I'm out.